Welcome everyone. Oh, hang on. There you go, need some light. That is all running off of some batteries down here that is charged by solar. I've got a 50 watt solar panel here at the moment that I'm replacing with this big 330 watt solar panel. So there'll be a lot more power going into these batteries. But not only these batteries, which I've been running on for years, 60 ampere hour roughly, these two batteries. So I've got two of those, and they're 240 ampere hour each. So 480 ampere hours, which is 5,760 kilowatt hours. No, 5,760 watt hours, or 5.76 kilowatt hours, that one. Otherwise that would be a lot of power. So they're to wire up, but at the moment, everything's running off these 60 ampere hour batteries. So, 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter, going through to a power supply to power the lights up here. The light up here, through this switch gang here. Then the air pump as well, that's powered by it. I'll turn that one on. The milling machine's running with it. So you have the milling machine, the light on top, the light inside, the fans that are inside, the blower motor, a camera transmitting back to the house so I can see what the milling machine is doing, uh, the light that's just over here, the monitor, the light that's just up here, we've got all them things, the nine things running off that pure sine wave inverter, 1000 watts, and it's only taking 227 watts. So I'll turn that one off. All goes dark. Turn it back on again. The milling machine won't run. There you go. Turn the power back onto the lights. Wait a second. There goes the milling machine again. That's all running off of these batteries. Don't need that on. Don't need that on. And we're back up and running again. So this milling machine is a solar powered CNC mill now. So I've converted it with the X and Y axis, the Y axis being that one, the X axis being that one. I'm going to be converting the spindle motor as well and the Z axis so it will move up and down on its own and control the motor on its own as well. And should be able to do some machine tapping as well. So it'll be able to rotate the spindle down and rotate the spindle back up again. And it's very good at getting rid of the chips as well with this blower motor. So that's uh, a project that's ongoing. There's the solar pool heaters that I'm still doing. So that's actually sitting outside at the moment so I couldn't bring it into here. And I'm going to be doing some more videos on that this year. Towards the summer when we've got some sun. Hopefully this year. Where I'll do some experiments with them as well. And then put them all online. I'll put the solar panel up as well and just show you where I'll put the solar panel and how it all works and through this MPPT controller, in fact I've got a camera here, through this maximum power point tracking, yeah maximum power point tracking uh, solar charger should give me ample power to run that mill for a long time and the other project I'm working on being the MGF electric vehicle conversion and now I have 18 brushless DC motors water cooled these are radio controlled boat motors and they're 3 kilowatts each so I've got 18 of those and some batteries to test it as well uh, 22 volts so 6 cell 40C discharge at 4.5 amps so that's quite a lot of energy then you've got the charge bag as well for that just for safety Speed controllers as well, these are 200 amp speed controllers at 8 cell, so I'm going to be running them at 6 cell. But what I'll probably do is use the O drive brushless DC motor driver. I've got some components milled out that I've manually milled out a long time ago, to be fair, but the milling machine's at a point where it can actually mill quite successfully, as in this component here and I'll make a video of how I made this how I made 
or the O-Drive motor heatsink that will go on the bottom of that. I'm going to do the Z-axis there in the same fashion that I've done that and then it's all going to be belt driven but timing belt driven and these brushless DC motors that I'll use for it will have a, a rotary encoder on the back of it so I can actually tell what angle the spindle motor is not only the RPM control it really accurately but also the angle of it as well so I can do machine tapping directly from the spindle motor we shall see then I've got the transmitter that I'll build into a, a unit so I've knocked it all over with this wire at the moment but standing all up again so I'll have a paper white display radio transmitter transmitting to the miller machine uh, feed speeds so I can adjust the percentage of feed speeds go through the menu system I'll have X, Y and Z as well on there so I can control the X, Y and Z of the milling machine and I'll be able to put in uh, code on there because at the moment I'm using this keypad and this display so I've got X, Y and Z on there and then I'll have control on there as well also going to be making some components for a couple of motorbikes just on the milling machine just to see how they turn out I've got some cables there as well, they are 10 AWG I believe and that's for the brushless DC motors for the O-Drive for the milling machine. So I'll do another video as well with the tools that I use as well, so things like the edge finder, some milling bits, I'll do feeds and speeds as well, rippers, um, a machine tap as well and and some of the other components I use as well like the machine vice, rotary table, things like that. Also I'll talk about the upgrades that I've been doing with the milling machine controller. So that milling machine is actually controlled by a Tinsy 4.1 now which is that small microprocessor there and it's got a memory stick in it now so I can actually put g-code on the memory stick load it to the RAM of the Tinsy 4.1, take the memory stick out and this milling machine can run itself whilst I create some more G-code. And then this is a Game Duino, which outputs HDMI, and the TNC 4.1 tells that what to display on the screen. So the, not only is the TNC 4.1 running the milling machine on G-code, but it's also displaying all of the information on the screen, which is really handy. And I've got a menu system there that I can, I can just flick through to set up the machine. And then I can choose, if I press 8, files, so I can choose files off of the memory stick. So number, let's go for number 8, enter, can say to remove that card and then when I go back into the main there's the G code for it. And if I had the milling machine running, as in these not flashing because I calibrate it, uh, that would actually run the G code on the milling machine and cut out the part, similar to this. So this is a spindle belt housing uh, and I machined that out and it took about 24 hours maybe a little bit more of milling time to machine that out of one billet of aluminium. And it's actually come out very well on uh, a home hobby mill that's running CNC. So I've got channels going down there as well and that's for a Perspex windows, so I've got Perspex windows that are going to go in either side, a uh, Perspex lid that's going to go on top and then these belts and pulleys are actually going to go inside this unit along with this motor that will mount on the other side of that. Uh, and this motor mounts inside this heatsink so that will actually sit on the bottom if I can do it, like that and then you'll have a window in there so you can see the motor going around and a window to see the belt going around. And the motor sits quite snug inside that housing. Like that. So as it rotates round, the air eddy currents that are going around with it should take the heat away from that motor and into the heatsink. And there'll be some heatsink compound as well that goes on the top of that, that goes on the base of this. So that it uses this as a big heatsink. 
This actually weighs about 800 grams, so it's not very heavy at all. And where this will sit is on the top of the milling machine. So it'll actually sit on the top of that mill there. So this part here, that's where it will sit. It will replace that. So that motor won't be there, so it won't be as tall as that. It will be right down to here. That's the height of it. And then the motor will actually sit at the back here. The spindle motor and the z-axis is actually going to run on 24 volts whereas the y-axis and x-axis only run on 12 volts hence why I've got the two batteries. The two big batteries, 240 ampere hour batteries, will be in series so I'll have a 12 volt system and I'll have a 24 volt system and the pure sine wave inverter up there will run off of one of those batteries as well. So this year I won't just be doing the projects in the garage, I'll actually be taking some of the projects down to Maker's Central event in the Birmingham NEC and that will be on the 30th of April and the 1st of May this year. Uh, so I'll be taking the milling machine, I'll be taking the solar pool heater um, and I'm going to be taking hopefully some of the MGF parts, if I can assemble some of the MGF power unit I'll take that as well. So at the Maker's Central event, I'll actually be running from batteries. I won't be using the power from the event at all. It'll all be from those batteries. So I should be able to run it for 28 hours, where, the, where I believe the show is around 14 hours over the two days. So there'll probably be some more projects as well, uh, but that's enough to get on with at the moment. I like to give myself a little bit of work. And I hope to get all of this done by Maker's Central. Please feel free to leave some comments in the comment section and I hope to see you in the next video or at Maker Central. Thank you.